Hey girls. Yeah. Some of you were going to be coming in. Come on, girls. Hey, babies. How are you? little bit. And tomorrow's a new bale day. They've got hay now spread over in piles, but there's plenty for them. I don't need to give them a new bale yet. They can finish off what's around here first. They're all collecting around the little piles I made. Hopefully they won't walk through too much of it. And somebody I'm sure will graze in here. I've put the ring feeder where I want the next bale to go. I think it'll go there. What's really good is all that hay carbon all in there 
will go into the soil, returning organic matter to the soil. And it'll be well manured. You can see the sheep's manures all through here. So you can see the grass is already coming up through where the first bill was all the way over there. So very well stomped in organic matter. Look at them all happy as anything, munching their hay that I've spread. That's protecting an oak tree a friend of mine gave me. Planted an oak tree there in 2020, I think. Maybe it's 2021, can't remember. Anyway, he's going, where's the sheep food? I can't find the sheep food. The sheep food is the hay. You're not a hay eating dog, are you? Yes, you're so sweet. Oh, you're so sweet. Such a sweet pup. So I've been potting up. It's been a very rainy day. I've been potting up. These are three remaining rowans that I haven't planted. And then these, all of these other ones, are crab apples that I was given. And uh, I was given them about a, a little while ago. No, not too long ago. Oh, just before the storm. So Friday of last week, Saturday, Friday, Saturday of last week, these were all bare rooted crab apples. And I've potted them all up uh, until I get a chance to plant them where I want them. So three rowans and two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, eight, about 20 crab apples. Not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna have to plant those out somewhere. I might keep a few in pots, some of the really, really small ones to let them grow on, and then I can plant them somewhere um, when they're substantially bigger. But these are native Irish crab apples, and my grandfather planted loads, so I'm just continuing the family tradition of planting crab apples. Here I have planted, these are some Gilda Rose, and then these are all Gilda Rose here, and then here are some more baby rowans. Uh, these are small rowans. This is a bigger one, but I'm going to keep those in pots and let them grow on this year and then plant them out next year. These Gilda Rose I'll plant out later this year. There's somewhere where I want to plant them, but um, uh, I haven't had the chance recently. So those are all my baby trees that I'll be planting there. So yeah, been busy planting trees while the rain has been raining, but planting them in pots, not out in their location in the on the farm. And what's so fun is I've got to trim these back, but you can see my hellebores are starting to get ready to bloom. Look at that. I should really trim these out of the way. That's what you're supposed to do, is trim back the leaves. Isn't that right, dogs? Anyway, that job's done. Herding the flock back in. They've had, their bed has been renewed. It's all wood chip, which is, there's a bit of straw, but that's because re-bedding the horses down there with straw. So the huge benefit about this is that wood chip has antibacterial properties. And these are the yews that are lame that I'm treating so hopefully this will help as well as getting their treatment. There's yews in the orchard that I have to herd down and sort out. There's ones that are sound in here that need to go back up to the orchard. The ones, there's ones in the orchard that need to come down and be treated. So I think I'll do that tomorrow. I've just, uh, I'm near wrecked now. I had Irish water out here last year because of the rubbish they threw into my field. That is more fecking Irish water rubbish. Look at that. 
Look at that. Nothing has improved. That is a water pipe that was chucked into the hedgerow. For feck's sake. Horses are waiting at the gate to come in. Hey girls, they're all walking away from the gate. Well, that's mostly grasshopper. So they can come in. Look at grasshopper is going away and away and away. As soon as her mother turns around and comes through the gate, grasshopper will turn around. Come on girls, come on. There we go. And here comes grasshopper. Slow down, please, girls. Good girls. Okay. Uh, what now? I've got to close this gate. Ah. Uh. What are you guys being spooked about? <laughs> Just calm down, people. Ain't a Java, chill. What are you spooked about? Walk on. What are you so spooked about, Grasshopper? You really have become neurotic since your fall. It's lovely fresh bedding you're in. With hay. Isn't that right, Mouse? Not Mouse. You look like a pony I had once called Mouse. Yes, Miss Daisy Rose. No, I don't have any carrots right this second. Okay. Those jobs are done now. So I was in town today and stopped in to my favorite chocolate place for a lovely, delicious hot chocolate. And the proprietor there, a lovely man, was making these and he gave it to me. And he said, you put it in your plant. And I said, okay, I'll put it, my lemon tree is not feeling very well. So I'll put it in my lemon tree plant. There we go. And see, it's got a heart shape and everything in it. So hopefully that will make my lemon tree feel better. My lemon tree is feeling rather sad and yellow leaved. So there's other leaves are looking better. So hopefully there's lots of fruit on it. I've also been feeding it. Um, oh, I want to take that out. That's a dead lemon. So it's got a lot of dead yellow leaves. So hopefully this will improve it. Now, what was amusing was when the lovely gentleman at the Truffle Flurry gave me this, I was going to the bank and I was getting my hot chocolate so I could stand in the queue at the bank. When I got to the bank, there was no queue and three people at the three different windows. So I had my choice. So lemon tree, hopefully, this will be good luck for you. Um, I need to actually probably do a milk wash, which is where you get milk and I wash the leaves with milk. And a lot of times that's an incredible resuscitator of plants like this. Anyway, my poor lemon tree. So everything else here is doing okay. Surviving this cold winter. So hopefully my copper hearted thing will do its magic for my lemon tree. The light is going and I've been here in the garden. I've been pruning the hellebore leaves so that it's exposing the flowers, all these hellebore flowers. So there's that one in bloom. And then we come along here and there's those ones, a different variety. And look, the primulas are coming out. 
and more hellebores, a yellow one. This one is in bud. Look at that pinky one. And this one. And there's more here and some white ones. And then this really beautiful one. Look at the colors. This is a lovely one. Oops, really beautiful. So that is my one of my hellebore beds. And then you come along here, along this tank. And earlier I was talking about uh, the crab apples and rowans. And I showed you this bed that was full of the hellebore leaves. And I've cleared them off so that the hellebore blooms can be exposed. And the black snake grass that I'd been dividing over the years is filling out. So they'll look beautiful, the contrast with those hellebores and the black snake grass. And then there's ferns. And then there's a creamy hellebore in a bud there. So Inca, no, please. Thank you. So hellebores are coming out with the snowdrops. There's no hellebores in here. There's crocuses and tulips and lots of primulas. And then we come back to the hellebore bed. So, <laughs> oh, Java was playing with magpie and then magpie took off. Magpie's disappeared. Whereas oven mitt has been hanging out watching me fill up my bin with hellebore leaves. So that's my prunings. A big bin of hellebore leaves. So I think I'm going to call it a day as the light fades. The winter light fades. Where you been? Where you been? Whoop, off they go.